Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Good morning, it's 7.30 on Saturday the 20th of February. Just making my way down to the land and as always, not quite sure what we're going to get done today, but let's find out. Well, here we are down on the land. It's not too bad a morning this morning. It's uh, not so cold. There's no sign of the sun yet, obviously. <laughs> but it's not raining and it's not snowing. So uh, I'll take that as a bit of a bonus. Loads of stuff in the, uh, in the car to move across the field this morning. So I'm just gonna pop and get the, uh, the trusty wheelbarrow. I'll, uh, I'll open up the cabin first just check everything's okay um, I'm in two minds today as to whether or not I need the fire on I don't think it's that cold to... <laughs> you watch having said that give it an hour and I'll be freezing <laughs> anyway we'll see as we go along I guess I'll get opened up and I'll uh, I'll keep you posted with what I'm up to today well since we're here let's take a quick look at the temperatures and we've got a What's that, a balmy 10 degrees outside <laughs> at this time of the morning? That's unheard of. What we got inside? Uh, actually not that much different, 10 degrees, if it'll ever focus. It's trying to look out the window. <laughs> there we go. Uh, go on, let's take a look while we're here, see what's going on inside here. Yeah, it's actually the same, 10 degrees. Hard to get the angle on that because it's buried inside, but trust me, it is. And I suppose we may as well go the whole hog and uh, see where it is in the cabin. And what have we got here? Oh, that's a bit of a surprise. It's nine, it's one degree less in here. <laughs> Don't quite know what that's about. Oh dear. Anyway, I'm, uh, this camera just does not want to focus. I'll get myself uh, the wheelbarrow and get across to the car and start uh, moving my little supplies across. Got some construction materials in the car this morning and uh, I'm hoping I'll have a bit more wood coming later, but we'll see I guess. Thank you. 
But just a quick look at uh, what I've been bringing across. Got a load of uh, breeze blocks, which will uh, form the base for the chicken hut when it eventually goes up. Not too bad a day this morning, I'm actually getting a sweat on. <laughs> uh, these water barrels are completely full, which isn't a surprise, I guess, given the amount of rain we've had lately. So I've got uh, two 1,000 tanks plus two 247-litre tanks, so not a bad little uh, stash of water there. This is the other things I was bringing across, <laughs> the obligatory paint. Um, I was surprised how short supply that was. I did struggle to find uh, fence paint, which is a bit surprising given the time of year. But what I did get, look at that. <laughs> the joys of live video for you. You put something on and it falls down. You just pick these up. I managed to find a bit of a bargain. Uh, if you're in the UK, and you pop into Tesco's but you better be quick because they are selling out quick there's these fruit trees and as you can see on there six pound each or two for a tenner so I've got a conference pear I've got a Estella cherry a golden delicious apple and a Jonah gold apple uh, so these will join the two trees, oh you can't see them from here, <laughs> again the joys of live video. You'll remember last year I put a couple of trees, fruit trees in just on this uh, northerly patch where you can see all those trees in the field there. Um, now they did get attacked to death by, I don't know whether it was rabbits, squirrels, deer, what it was, uh, had all the bark chewed off them. I'm hoping that doesn't happen this year. I'll have to put some of uh, that plastic, uh, I don't know what it's called, tree guard. <laughs> it's like a plastic wrap you get to put around the uh, the trunk of the trees. Um, but I'm debating what to do with these now, because they can go in, they're, they're bare root, but I'm conscious that uh, we've still got frost potentially. So I'm tempted to pop those into pots for now. They can then go into the uh, the polytunnel or into the garden room uh, where they should be safe from the frost. Um, so that's what I've been bringing down today. I've got uh, a few more of those blocks to buy. I can only get so many in the car. This is when you kind of wish that you had a, a trailer or a uh, pickup truck. Uh, but I don't <laughs> have either of those. And to be honest, I can't afford to pick up truck. <laughs> so I just keep popping backwards and forwards as and when I can and topping up. Um, there should be some wood coming today. Uh, and we'll be pretty much there for construction materials for the, uh, the chicken hut. So hopefully over the next few weeks, um, you'll see that constructed. And eventually I'll get some chickens to compete with the noise of old Gary's chickens next door to me. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to get the kettle on and uh, have a ponder as to what to do with these trees. Well, just while that kettle's boiling, I'll give you a quick run round. Uh, no sign of life yet in the uh, the carrots or the potatoes. I guess that's not such a big surprise, uh, given the temperatures we've had. Let's take a little look in the, uh, the raised beds. Lots of condensation. Uh, take a little look, no, not a sign there, that's the, uh, the cabbage, let's take a little look in this one, oh, just a minute, <laughs> just a minute, look at that, we've got a little seedling, that's uh, cauliflower, uh, when did that go in? That went in 16th of January, according to that little tag. So look at that, our first little seedling popping up. <laughs> Can you tell how excited I am? <laughs> I'm getting all giddy with myself. Um, go on then, let's take a little look in these. 
for um wow uh look at that we've got all of this tray pots or what do you call them those little cells that's what we're talking <laughs> what we're looking for apart from one have got um what are these 23rd of january swede that's swede sprouting um i'll need to do some work with these because they're going to get leggy i, I didn't look uh last weekend i sh perhaps should have done i think i just looked in this end tray uh okay let's have a look on this one no nothing in there bit of premature excitement <laughs> uh that's peas in there and oh, go on let's have a little look <sighs> yep there's nothing in that one in fact i don't think i planted anything in that one <laughs> there's no tag <laughs> maybe i should now given the progress of the swedes i'm stunned by them um this end one was marigolds and there's nothing in there so swede i'm just i'm gonna have to have another look because i'm so stunned I can't get over how big they are uh, and how early I mean 23rd of Jan that's it's not quite a month and they're what are they they're inch and a half already <laughs> right anyway let's get uh, that pop back on uh, so clearly a bit of work to do there get those uh, Maybe transplant them, I don't know. I'm kind of nervous now. <laughs> now that uh, I've got growth. Um, as to what to do with those. Whether to try potting them on or just leave them. Perhaps pull them out. Um, into the uh, So they get in full light rather than that covered light. Um, but yeah, let me get this coffee made. And then we'll sit down and have a little think and a chat perhaps. Well, here we are, down in the cabin, and it's not a bad morning, to be fair, outside. Uh, it's a balmy 11 degrees now in the cabin, so we've gained a couple of degrees since I uh, arrived. I've gained <laughs> quite a few degrees. I haven't even got my jacket on today. Uh, I took that off as soon as I got in. Um, but moving all that construction material and those trees across the field. I've got a bit of a sweat on. <laughs> you know what that was, don't you? It's those trees falling down again. Um, so anyway, here we are. It's uh, a nice Saturday morning. Got an early start this morning to, uh, to pop in to pick up those breeze blocks. Um, luckily that shop opens early on a Saturday, seven o'clock. Um, so that was nice to be able to get those picked up. Um, and those trees, if you are in the UK, um, I did see those last weekend when I was um, picking my shopping up on the Friday night. And I almost bought them. You know how it is when you walk in, you go, ooh, that's not bad. Um, I'll get my shopping and I'll pop back. <laughs> and you never do, do you? <laughs> You get caught up in the madness of the checkout and uh, you forget all about it, which is what I did last last weekend. And it's been bugging me all week, um, wondering whether or not the, uh, the supermarket would have those in. And the one that I normally go to on the Friday night, um, I called in deliberately with a plan to buy them. And guess what? <laughs> They'd sold out. Um, so this morning, when I went to pick up the, uh, the breeze blocks, um, there's another Tesco supermarket um, in another town nearby. So on the off chance, I called in there. Um, and where they should be, um, they weren't. And I, I almost lost heart. And I thought, do you know what? I'll just have a bit of a rummage around. Um, and I found them tucked away in a corner. So... I've picked up four of those, um, £6 each if you buy them 
individually or two for ten pound um, which is a bit of a bargain you are taking a chance because these are mass produced for the supermarket they're not really what we would call nursery grown um, so you are taking a chance but for that money compared to what did I pay I think I paid about 21 pounds before from a nursery um, for the ones that are out on the field um, and really in terms of, of height there's maybe six inches no more than six eight inches in difference between the ones I've got today and the ones I bought for well essentially double the price <laughs> more than double the price um, so yeah if you are in the UK and uh, you've got a bit of garden why not have a little fruit tree get yourself uh, treated and uh, get one planted you're not going to see any fruit off those for a couple of years but does it really matter they're there as a bit of a long-term investment aren't they really uh, as part of your kind of self-sufficiency drive um, so we'll see how we get on <laughs> can you bear with me for a few years <laughs> and see if we get any fruit off those um, newsworthy items you might have seen let's just forget Covid shall we it's on my predictions it's almost done <laughs> I did say April didn't I um, so watch this space uh, but yeah let's forget that um, and let's talk about something a bit more prepper related you'll have heard me talk a couple of times in the cabin chats over recent weeks about freezing temperatures and if you were a regular viewer to the channel you might have seen something that popped up on the uh, community tab and I think I think I might have mentioned it last weekend um, if you haven't guessed yet we're talking about Texas um, in the in the midst of a uh, a cold snap they're not used to having these sub-zero temperatures and not used to having snowfall I don't think <laughs> if you're from Texas you'll have to let me know um, but carnage complete carnage across the state of Texas um, and yeah in some places there was a couple of inches of snow but from looking at the news reports that I've seen um, not that much snow I mean we're talking like centimeters not inches of snow excuse me um, but yes freezing temperatures and again they're not you're not talking about you know minus 20s minus 30s that you get in uh, parts of East Europe or Russia and you're not really talking about what we have here in the UK between kind of minus 6 to minus mm, getting on for 20s uh, up in Scotland um, but complete carnage water pipes completely frozen um, flooding people's houses out I saw some pictures of icicles hanging from the ceiling of somebody's house um, the electric grid down with millions of people uh, without power um, certainly a big wake-up call if people weren't prepping in Texas <laughs> for uh, grid down with the utilities um, I guarantee there will be now um, so it's kind of a timely reminder really about how a weather pretty short snap of cold uh, can cause complete carnage if your grid system is not geared up for it which clearly it isn't in, in Texas um, so it's worth just pondering on that for a while I have mentioned my water here in the cabin um, a couple of times I have had frozen water pipes um, that's geese flying all over the cabin believe it or not that noise um, where was I yeah I've had frozen water pipes here in the cabin a couple of times um, <clears throat> short periods like for a day um, which had I been living here with the wood burner going I, I wouldn't have had but because I'm not it has so it's a, it's a lesson learned for me but on the broader subject of, of grid down it is worth just thinking what would you do if you were in the position of these people in Texas um, 
we have a bit of a blend of energy in the UK. Um, generally, gas is the predominant one for heating homes uh, and for cooking, and then electric for lighting. And um, some lots of people do have electric for cooking. Um, but what would you do if the electric grid went down? Could you cope? Um, myself, as an example, my house, I think I've mentioned this in a few of my cooking videos, my house is completely dependent on electricity for heating uh, and for, for cooking and hot water for, for you know washing up and showering. So if my electric went down, um, I would be in deep duty. <laughs> Um, or would I? Because as part of my preps, um, I do store water out in the uh, the garden shed. I've got I don't know how many hundreds of liters off the top of my head, um, but hundreds of liters. Um, so I'd be okay if we lost water for a couple of days. Um, in terms of power, I've got a solar setup in the shed outside the house, um, so that gives me both 12 volt and uh, mains to 20 volt through an inverter um, so I, I could get away with solar electric depends how much I use of course um, but as you'll know I have a portable petrol uh, electric generator uh, and I have enough petrol on store to run that for actually several weeks so I'm okay there for electricity and I can use that for the more high load items such as microwaves um, in terms of uh, heat, I've got a portable uh, butane gas uh, heater. It's one of those big ones that you can wheel around. Um, they were real popular kind of 20, 30 years ago <laughs> as a cheap way of heating. Um, but they're not so cheap nowadays with the price of gas. I think you're talking about uh, 15 kilos of gas is about 30 pounds to refill. If I remember rightly from my uh, last time I, I swapped out a gas cylinder. Um, and I've also got a small two ring portable um, gas stove. It's one of these countertop ones. So for heating, lighting, a uh, combination of gas and electric for cooking gas. Um, so I'm fairly confident that I could see out, uh, certainly in terms of electric for the generator, from the generator and from cooking on gas several weeks without mains um, and then I can always resupply the petrol for the generator and the gas for the heating and the cooking um, if my existing stocks run out you wouldn't though would you at the first sign of a grid down you'd be buying lots of extra <laughs> just in case it was more than a few weeks um, so yeah the uh, the ongoing incident in Texas uh, should be food for thought for everybody, really. Um, the men's utility grid is fragile in pretty much every country. It doesn't take much for it to go out. We've seen here in the UK power outages in the last couple of years, um, not through weather, but from a failure in the electric grid itself. A couple of power stations went offline and caused a cascade um, that had a, a national blackout. Very short lived within a day in most places it was back on again um, but it can and does happen so food for thought today what have you got planned if your mains electric or gas goes down have you got a backup um, and if not why not <laughs> um, those little gas countertop stoves I was talking about earlier they're not expensive I think I paid about 45 pounds for a two ring burner plus the pipe and regulator that goes to the gas bottle so that's not really expensive um, a full cylinder of gas as I say refills are about 30 pounds the initial buying of the gas bottle is expensive because you pay for the the cylinder um, I think if you're buying the cylinder new from scratch with the gas inside it's about 70 75 pounds for a 15 kilo if anybody uses it regularly, they can comment in the comment section, but I think it's around that price. Um, solar, as you know from my setup, one panel is about 75, 80 pounds if you're buying cheap. Um, batteries, 
60 to 70 pounds if you're buying them cheap um, and the portable generators and they're not cheap they're about 400 pounds um, for a two um, 2000 watt uh, generator but it's something to aspire to if you don't already have and if you need to save up for a while then why not start uh, saving up so yeah Texas have a look at that and uh, have a little think about what you might do um, in terms of what I'm getting done today you'll have seen what I've been doing earlier I'm prepping construction materials with a view to starting the chicken coop um, if I'm lucky and the weather holds uh, I might start that next week I'm just a bit reluctant to start fabricating outside with wood um, until I'm sure that I'm going to get a decent bit of weather and the forecast this coming week isn't great we are forecast for more rain starting today um, but certainly that is what I'm aspiring to over the next few weeks to get the chicken coop done um, and then go buy the chickens and in terms of planting I've got the debate now of what to do with those trees do I pop them in the ground outside and hope for the best or do I grab some pots uh, and pop them into pots either here in the garden room or in the polytunnel and just let them sit in there um, for the next few weeks where I know they're not going to, uh, to get frozen in the ground big debate you'll have to wait and see <laughs> you'll find out at some point today because I need to decide now um, as to what to do um, now I've got those seedlings did you see those how nice was that that's a real nice surprise um, I was not expecting to see anything in there if I'm totally honest um, I had imagined that not much was going on I did lift the lid of one of those um, little trays inside that cupboard bed last weekend so it went like that and got disappointed <laughs> and didn't even bother checking the rest um, so lesson learned there I should have checked all of them um, so I need to think about what to do with those now um, but that's a real nice start to the year we're sat here it's 20th of February uh, and I've got cauliflower sprouting and those Swedes going completely crazy in that tray I can't stop looking at it now <laughs> so I'll be doing a little bit with those as well today um, I have got more wood I hope coming I might do a little bit of um, of painting now I've got some more paint who knows what I might do but for now I'm going to finish this coffee and I'll catch up with you in a short while to see what we do get done Just giving the little red tractor a bit of a run round just to keep it warmed up and make sure everything's working uh, I've just popped some water into these potatoes and carrots that I've got in I've moved that tree of swede uh, out of that covered bed just so it gets more all-round daylight and try and stop them getting too leggy and then I've just done the same in here I've given them a quick water uh, and we'll see how we get on with those Got to take a look at those uh, fruit trees now and uh, 
I'll get the tractor put away in its garage shortly. I'll just give it another 5-10 minutes of a little run time just to keep it warm through and keep it happy because it does work hard for me, bless it. Well now I've got these water barrels in and they're both full I've just uh, temporarily popped a, a length of pipe onto the outlet tap eventually this will go through into the cabin for the automatic watering system but for now I've just popped a temporary tap on the end of it so I turn that on and we've got water coming out and I'll just fill these water containers as a bit of an extra backup I know we're going to get rain <laughs> so with these big barrels being full it'd be a shame to waste it just overflowing so I may as well make use of it and fill these containers up nice and easy now well this is the first potting up we've done in the, uh, the polytunnel this year and uh, all I'm doing really is putting a bit of soil into these pots ready to take the, uh, the fruit trees I decided not to chance it outside they're, uh, they're not going to be producing fruit anyway for quite some time so I thought I'd give them a good a start as I could by putting them into these these containers, pots, whatever you want to call them, and uh, keeping them in for now the uh, the polytunnel. But uh, eventually, when this comes down, they'll go in the garden room. So I'll just finish this off, and then I'll get the, the trees inside so you can see one of them going in the pot. So I've got the trees in the polytunnel, uh, they come packed in these plastic bags with another bag around the boot root, around the root ball and then I've taken this, uh, this is a John Gold apple tree, I've taken it out of its packaging. Um, to be fair it's not in bad condition, it has got uh, little shoots in fact, there's one there that's leafing. I don't know if you'll get that or not on the uh, the camera. It's trying to focus the background rather than the foreground. Let me just put my hand behind it. Maybe that will help. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a bud on the end there. There's a couple of those around the tree. I've unpacked the root ball, you can see it's got like a, a plastic bag and then this cling film kind of stuff and that is absolutely bone dry, really dry but we have got some decent root on it, there's some fresh root there so what I'm going to do is just, I've got myself a bucket of water, I'm just going to pop that as it is into that bucket of water and just let it sit there for a while to soak some water up before I uh, try potting it up. Don't know if you can hear or not on the uh, polytunnel but it started to rain <laughs> so I've got a couple of things I need to just move from outside uh, but I'll unpack these four these four uh, trees and do the same thing. I'll unpack the root ball and pop it in a bucket of water just to give it a bit of a drink and then it can go into these into these pots 
so I'll be back shortly once I've uh, rescued the stuff that's outside in the rain and then we'll uh, work through these trees. I'm just doing the last of the uh, trees now, getting them in these buckets. I've got two in this one and another one in that watering can. But as you can see, I've unpacked this one and the bulk of this is just soil. There's very little root on this. Uh, this is a cherry. So I'm a little bit concerned about this one. Uh, it's not been packed very well, to be fair. The, the cling film is just wrapped around soil there. That's just a big ball of soil. Uh, the roots were actually in this top bit. Uh, and as I say, there's not many of them. So it's maybe just as well I am putting this in a in a pot rather than straight in the ground because I, I do have my doubts about this one, <laughs> it has to be said. Anyway, it's going in the watering can to get a good drink of water while I go and do the same thing. I'm going to go and get myself a cup of coffee and hope that this rain stops. I need to get the tractor garage locked up. Well, it seems strange sitting in here with no fire. <laughs> a pleasant change though. The, uh, the trees are just in those buckets of water, getting a bit of a soak in. In theory, I should really leave them in there um, overnight, but actually looking at them, there's not much of a, of a root ball on, on them. Uh, so it shouldn't take too long. I'll give it a couple of hours and I can get them potted in. And in the meantime, I'm hoping this rain's gonna stop. I'm gonna get some bag of chips or potato crisps with my coffee and just have a bit of a chill and a think. Well, my coffee break didn't last, but I'm not complaining because uh, I've got a wood delivery just arrived. So that's good news. All of the materials for the chicken coop are now here. I'll just get them run across the field and into the cabin out of the rain. Good job. It's nice to have a little bit of help. I cheated and took the uh, eight foot lengths. <laughs> Left poor old Sean to cop for the 12 foot lengths. Uh, no sign of that sun making an appearance. It's hiding behind all the clouds, but uh, the rain's held off a little bit, so that's good. We get these bigger pieces of wood in the polytunnel because they're too big for the cabin. Well, that's been a productive little uh, half hour, three quarters of an hour, whatever it was, just potting these up. So we've got our golden delicious apple tree. We've got a, a cherry, which I'm not overly convinced about the roots on. <laughs> and then we've got a conference pear and that uh, Jonah Gold apple. But to be fair, they have all got, I don't know whether the camera will see these or not. I do that maybe. Is it going to focus? Yeah, so we've got green shoots there. Loads of green shoots on this one. I did see some on this cherry. I can't remember where it was. Oh, it's there. Uh, it's not going to focus on the branch. There you go. And the only one that doesn't seem to have is this Golden Delicious, which is looking a bit raggy. But there is a bud there and another little one just there. So fingers crossed, all of them have got buds, green buds on. What is up with this camera? <laughs> Seriously? Come on, focus. There we go. Yeah, so we have got green buds on them all. They've all had a really good watering and I'll just keep on top of that. They should be fine inside here even if the temperatures do drop again. Um, all of these other plants have managed to make it through without any trouble, even in those big sub-zero temperatures. These strawberries are actually putting on a lot of new growth now. So that's looking good for later this year. Hopefully we'll have a little bumper crop. Um, but yeah, excited now to see what happens with those trees.
fingers crossed. At least they should have a decent start in a pot rather than in the field itself. But we'll see, I guess, as time goes by. Well, that's it for another day. Short but productive day today. Nice to get my uh, construction materials down. Even more nice to see the results of those seed trays. And of course, I've now got another four fruit trees ready to start growing and producing. So all in all, very happy with today. The sun still hasn't made an appearance. It's behind all these clouds, there is a storm moving in. Uh, so I am pleased I got everything that I could done today because I, I, I'm doubting highly I'll have such a, a pleasant day tomorrow. Um, I did have a wander up at that top corner of the field earlier on just to have a little look where that uh, pond's going and uh, it is still holding water there clearly not as much as it was the other weekend when it was pretty much flooded in that corner um, but it is still there so I am itching, I really am itching to to get on there with a mini digger if we can get this next month out of the way and we know that the weather, the bad weather's pretty much gone for good. Uh, fingers crossed we'll make some progress there. But anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to get myself off home and I'll catch up with you later. Well, that's it for this video. I hope there was something in there that was of interest to you. If you did like the video, please do click on the like button. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. As always, I welcome any comments, questions or suggestions you might have. How surprised were you to see those seedlings sprouting? <laughs> I was certainly surprised. And what do you think about the trees, the fruit trees? Was it the right decision to put them in pots rather than in the ground? Let me know in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.